so purple. I just realized I didn't take my foundation off for this. The option has started. Why can I never get through this part? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Mai, Mashable's tech reporter, and this is Beauty Hacked, where we're digging into the science and tech that makes beauty innovation exciting. Today, we're testing out some beauty tech that could change the game for the online shopping addicts among us. Okay, yeah, it's me. I'm the online shopping addict, but aren't we all a little bit addicts? Because it's just it's so fun and so easy. Everyone wants to do a little online shopping, right? Today, we are trying three different AR-powered virtual try-on makeup services. This option has started to crop up on more and more makeup retailers and brands online, including Ulta, NARS, e.l.f., and tons more. And it aims to help you find and see the perfect shade of whatever foundation, lipstick, or blush you might be trying to buy before actually placing your order. It's a super useful concept for something like buying makeup online, since no one likes trying to guess the right shade of a product, ordering it, and then finding out it's not really right. Plus, it's a very accessible type of beauty tech that anyone with an internet connection and a camera can get their hands on and try out, and we always love that. We're going to try out the virtual try-on services offered by a couple of big brands today, Estee Lauder, NARS, and Laura Mercier. We'll scroll through the products offered, try them on in augmented reality, and then also try them on in real life to see how they compare to their virtual counterparts. But. Before we hop into it, let's talk about AR itself a little more. AR, like we mentioned, stands for augmented reality, and you're probably really familiar with it in the form of filters. Whether it's a Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram filter, whatever, you've likely used a beautifying filter before. The ones that blur your pores, add a little flush to your cheeks, make your eyes a little bit bigger, or even change the shape of your nose. These sometimes problematic filters essentially let you try on virtual makeup when they're adding that flushed cheek, redder lip, or darkened lashes. The tech behind these filters and the tech behind virtual try-on services for actual makeup are pretty similar. In filters, the AR tech scans the video image to detect your face, communicates with the cloud, and overlays one set of virtual changes designed by a filter creator to the image. In beautifying filters, these changes are makeup-like, but the same concept applies when you use the puppy dog filter on Snapchat or the tiny bee filter on TikTok. In virtual try-on services for real-life makeup, the changes aren't designed by a filter creator to make a creative effect. Instead, they're designed to match up with real-life makeup products. When you use one of these services, ideally you should be seeing a virtual version of the exact shade of blush you want to buy, not just a vague shade of pink. Since each brand and each type of makeup have a lot of tiny color differences in each of their products, whether it's NARS's iconic orgasm peachy pink blush or MAC's Ruby Woo red lipstick, the virtual try-on services have to deliver a much more precise AR experience than a filter would. To achieve this, you usually have to have pretty good lighting while virtually trying on your products to ensure that your skin color is read correctly and you're seeing the shade of your virtual makeup correctly. We here at Mashable interviewed Alice Chang, CEO of Perfect Corp last year. Perfect Corp makes AR tech products specifically for beauty brands to implement into their online buying experience and partners with brands like NARS, Benefit, e.l.f., and tons more. Alice told us about how Perfect Corp's AR handles scanning for skin tones, since that's super essential in matching foundations and overlaying other makeup products. She said that Perfect Corp's AR uses 1.25 million digital neurons across a full spectrum of skin tones, up to 89,968 shades, and takes into account adaptive environmental lighting adjustments to ensure the most accurate smart shade finder detection available today. That's a ton of digital neurons and a ton of skin shades. But somehow I'm still not totally convinced that every human skin tone is perfectly represented here. So we're gonna test it out right here, right now. Like I mentioned, we're using the Estee Lauder, Laura Mercier, and NARS virtual try-ons, and we'll be specifically trying on some lipstick, blush, and foundation. Let's do it. Okay, so I've pulled up the three different virtual try-on services that we're going to use. And the first one is NARS. And we are going to look at NARS's iconic blushes. Like I mentioned, their orgasm shade is super iconic. And I actually already own it. So I'm gonna see if I can virtually try on a different shade that will tickle my fancy. And maybe a shade that I wouldn't normally use. All right, so it's just at narscosmetics.com. Go to their blushes and whatever products they have that are available for virtual try-on will have this little badge on there. So we're on their best-selling blush and there's tons of shades here. 
A lot of them are not currently available online for actually purchasing them, but even when they're not available to physically purchase, you can still virtually try them on. So we can try on whatever ones we want today. Um, first, let's pull up, because we've mentioned it so much, let's look at the virtual try on for orgasm first. It's super subtle, to be honest. I do kind of have blush on right now, so maybe that's the problem. But I can I can't see it, and it looks pretty real. Like it kind of looks like a normal photo of me. Like it doesn't look like a super obvious virtual try on thing. Um, let's try in a different shade. This one is Orgasm X, which is just like a deeper shade of that same like peachy pink color. Not super noticeably different. But again, this is a color that I do already own, so I'm not surprised that it doesn't look different to me. Let's try on one that I wouldn't normally go for. Impassioned, it's a pink orchid, is what it's described as. Ooh, I feel like I can barely see it on me. Ooh, there we go. I can see it way better when I get closer. And it looks almost gray on me virtually. And this is where this would be nice because I would just not buy this color. If I was looking to buy a new shade of blush right now and trying on a color I wouldn't normally try on like this um, impassioned shade, I'm not gonna buy this because it looks bad on me. Moving on, let's move over to Laura Mercier's virtual try on. And we are going to use Laura Mercier's virtual service to try on their Rouge Essentiel Cream Lipstick. I think lipstick is kind of the easiest thing to virtually try on because it just has to find my lip shape and then overlay that pretty flat color. I think lip gloss would be a whole different story because gloss has a shiny finish to it, but we're using it for a matte finish lipstick. So I anticipate this being pretty true to real life. Okay, there, yeah, it's super obvious right away. It's the easiest one to see for sure. So they have a ton of shades here. Again, I think even when they're not available, ooh, a couple of them are invalid on Laura Mercier's. So each, each retailer is a little bit different in how they, they use the virtual try-on services. Some of the colors, I would imagine, they haven't been able to translate super well to a virtual version, so then they, they are not available for virtual try-on. So I just clicked on this color, what was it? Magenta Delicat, and it is not available for virtual try-on. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but I guess we'll move on. This is the Blush Pink, and I don't really like it, to be honest. It's like too light of a shade, and I'm a little surprised to see how light it is because when I look at it on the color picker side, it kind of looks like my usual mauve pink that I wear often. So again, virtual try on saving me from buying a color that I would normally probably not like in real life if that's what it actually looked like. Um, let's try on a color I wouldn't normally do. Again, a coral shade. I'm not an orange lipstick type of person. This is the shade L'Orange. L'Orange? L'Orange? Okay, this is kind of the opposite. It looks like very orange in the color picking shade, but then in the virtual try on, it looks like peachy pink. So I kind of like that and maybe I would buy that. Let's try on one more that I think would be totally wild for me. It's a mauve shade in violet. Ooh, this is a deep like purple color. I don't own a lot of purple lipsticks. And I think this one shows up really well on the virtual try on because it is a deeper color. It's a, it's a darker purple um, rather than like that light coral or um, light pink like before. I could see those perfectly well, but this I'm like, okay, that's what it looks like on me. I feel like it doesn't even look like it's a virtual try on because it's, it's finding my lips so well and it's so clear where the purple is. Although it is kind of funny when I cover my lips, it still shows on top of my hand. Um, all right, and last up, we are gonna try Estee Lauder's iconic foundation. Um, a lot of people swear by Estee Lauder's double wear foundation. I have actually used it myself previously, but I color matched myself in store with someone who works at the makeup store. Okay, so it's found my shades, and what's cool about Estee Lauder, and specifically for foundation, is that it actually gave me four different shades that I can virtually try on, and then 
decide for myself what I think is best for me and for what look I'm trying to achieve. So it gave me a cooler shade, a lighter shade, a best shade, and a darker shade. For me, the best shade is 2W1, which is a shade darker than my um, winter version of this foundation that I personally got color matched in store. So that's interesting and it kind of seems to measure up. Being one shade darker in the summer with a tan, that sounds right. Um, the darker shade looks way too dark. So I'm not gonna go with that. And the lighter shade looks too light. So I actually kind of trust its recommendation for the best shade of 2W1. So we'll make a note of that. We're gonna run a Sephora and we're gonna pick up our supplies, try them all on in real life and see what it looks like in comparison to their virtual counterparts. Okay, we're back and we've grabbed the products that we virtually tried on and we have them here in person. Now, remember, normally if you are using this for online shopping, you can just place the order directly through each of these websites and wait for them to come to your doorstep. But since we have a Sephora down the street, we just went and got them ourselves. So we have the Estee Lauder foundation in shade 2W1. We have the Laura Mercier lipstick in shade Violet and the NARS blush in shade Exhibit A. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna put on is actually the foundation. So I just took off my existing foundation and um, I'm going to put it on because it's kind of the base. I can't really put the blush on until I put the foundation on. So this is the one I'm most nervous about. So we're starting off strong here, opening it up. She's gorgeous. Ooh, it looks a little light on my hand. but we're gonna put it on and see what it looks like on my face. Okay, this is the finished foundation look. Keep in mind, it is just foundation. There's like literally no other products on my face right now. So I would normally finish out my face routine with a little bronzer, a little blush, but we'll get to that part. But just on a shade match, I feel like I think it's a little bit light, but it does kind of match my neck skin tone well, which is really important to me when using foundation because I feel like if you match it to just your face tone and your face is actually darker than your neck, then you have to like cover your whole neck in foundation too, which ick, feels just gross to me personally. If you do it, do your thing. But I personally do not like that feeling. So let's also look at what it looks like online. This is virtual me and this is real life me. How do we compare? I think it looks the same. Like I don't think that this was a misrepresentation of this shade on here at all. I think it's just like a little jarring to see virtual you and real you next to both versions of it. I don't know, I think I'm getting used to it. I think it's just a different shade that I'm normal, normally used to using, but it does match, I think. So let's continue on and see what the rest of them look like. All right, next up, we are going to try out the blush from NARS in shade Exhibit A. So that was that like bright red shade. Um, it's a matte red, I believe, is what it was described as. And I don't think I've ever used a red blush. I've always used like peachy pink colors. The iconic packaging, of course. Here's what it looks like. It has a little plastic film on there. So let me take it off so we can get the full effect. Super red. It's so red. I'm gonna pull up like the image of myself wearing it virtually. It looks nice virtually, let me tell you. And I do think blush is the most personalizable, <laughs> customizable as some might say, um, because I think I can pack this on really densely to get like a really red look or I can like more sheerly apply it and get like a subtle red look, hopefully. So let's put it on and see what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the brush. The pink around it is from my old blush because I need to wash this brush clearly. But the red part is this blush. So let's put it on. And I like to apply my blush like pretty high up at my cheekbones. It's pretty actually. It's not like a harsh red, it almost, Obviously like blushes look different on different skin tones. And that's why I didn't mind it virtually on mine was that it didn't look like a harsh red. And it's kind of blending out to be like a pretty like rosy color. It's definitely a noticeable blush though, which 
is also true virtually. This is what it looks like. I kind of like it. I, like I said, not a color I would normally use, but it's not like a crazy, crazy red once I put it on. And that's what made me like it when I was looking at it virtually. So I'm glad that that did transfer to its real life version. But I could definitely see how if I had gone crazy with it right away, it would have been super red and super pigmented. And that would have made me not like it because that's not what it looks like online in the virtual version. So I think the application has a lot to do with what these shades look like in real life. So if you're doing something super pigmented, maybe just take it slow at the very beginning if you're trying to like make it look exactly like what it looks like virtually. Because if I had gone crazy at the beginning, I think I would have been way less pleased with what it looks like. But as it stands, I think it looks pretty good and I think it looks like the virtual version. So good job, Nars. That was a pleasing experience. And the last one we have is the Laura Mercier lipstick in shade Violet. This is that deep purple lipstick that we talked about and I'm super excited to see what it actually looks like in real life. Ooh. Oh, I kind of want to look at what it looks like online right now. I think I kind of thought it was going to be like more berry-ish, like a little bit of red purple, but this is like fuchsia purple. It's hard to tell until you see it on yourself, but I guess I'll put it on and see what it looks like and see how it compares. Wow, it's very purple, obviously. So purple. I think it's really fun though. Like I said, a color I wouldn't normally choose, but I liked that the virtual try-on kind of like emboldened me to try it out. The formula feels amazing, let me tell you. Let's zoom up on that image and see how it compares. I think it looks truly identical. Like that's so, so close, if not exactly the same color. And I think it's just a little jarring to see it on me in real life rather than virtually. Again, it's just kind of like recalibrating your mental image of yourself when you're looking in a mirror versus looking in a photo and whatnot. But the color is the same. That was, that's a very impressive color match. And it's a very specific color, I will say, and a color that I'm not used to seeing on myself. And I think I like it in both the virtual version and the real life version. And I'm glad that the virtual version got me to try out a new color. Maybe it's my new favorite shade of lipstick, who knows. All right, now that we've virtually tried on all of this makeup and real life tried on the real life counterparts, let's talk about the entire experience. On the did it work scale, I think I'm gonna give the foundation, lipstick, and blush virtual try-on services a 4.5 out of five. I think this was as close to perfect as it could be because every single product that I tried here today was pretty true to what it looked like online as it did in real life. I think the foundation was like a tad off-putting, but I think that was more having to calibrate between seeing the color on my face and my neck versus like the app just placing it over like all of the skin that was visible. It didn't change that the color was accurate. I think it just was a self-perception thing. And that's not so much the app's fault. It's just how makeup and real life works. So I think the virtual try-on worked super well. Next up on the simplicity scale, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. That was so easy to use. I think they all essentially do the exact same process, um, the Laura Mercier and the NARS especially, since that was in the browser, it just used your laptop's camera and it allowed you to take a static photo. Um, the Estee Lauder one was a tiny bit different in having to use your smartphone, but I kind of appreciated that it was like really trying to use the best camera that it could, but it was very easy. All I had to do was click the little button that said virtual try on, click on the shade that I wanted to try on for the lipstick and the blush, and then hold the camera up to my face or like position my face accordingly. And it showed me what it looked like virtually. And then in real life, I applied it like normal. So pretty much as simple as it can be. All you had to do was click a couple buttons and then you were looking at it. Next up, the cost effectiveness scale. All right, you know we love a freebie and virtual try-on services are free. It's actually probably a little bit more cost effective than if you were to go into the store and 
just think about trying on makeup and then you were gonna buy stuff anyways. This way you're literally just trying it on and then you can decide whether you wanna buy it from there. Of course, the products themselves cost money, but the tech, the virtual try-on service is free. So obviously on the cost effectiveness scale, another five out of five. And lastly, as always, let's talk about the coolness factor. I feel like it's not the buzziest beauty tech, but honestly, it was super useful. So when I'm thinking about how cool it is, I wanna give it a three out of five, but I think I'm gonna bump it up to a four out of five because of how well it actually worked and how cool I felt once I got new makeup that actually matched what I thought it was going to look like. So four out of five on the coolness factor and huge shout out to it actually working. For more tech, entertainment, culture, social good, and of course, beauty tech coverage, make sure you subscribe to our channel.